I'm going to take attendance, please. Um, this is for DG application. Uh, Mr. Decker is present. Yes. Mr. Sokolowski. Yes. Good evening. Um, Chairman, I am here. Alex. Yes. John. Yes. And David. Present. Okay. Thank you. I think we got to go over. Do we? Uh, do we want to accept the minutes uh, from the last meeting? Find the agenda here. You know, I, I didn't get those sent to me. Was I supposed to look at them? Uh, I didn't see them come across my email list. The minutes. Why don't we postpone the minutes if John hasn't read them? Yeah, I think that's 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 good. There is a error that I'd like to draw to your attention. Um, the meeting of December 10th, it says that I was present, but I was not. Okay. Um, you weren't there for the first part of that meeting? No? David, um, you were not there for the whole meeting? On the 9th, I was there. Night, but not the 10th at all? Okay, I'll make a, we'll make a change in that. Hmm. Okay. So that's Sorry about that. December tenth, uh, David, you were not present. Correct. Okay. I'll I'll change it. Thank you. I mean, if you look at the video and you see me, let me know. But okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, we're gonna. Um, is Mr. Costa there? Mr. Costa. I am. Okay. We're going to uh, continuation of uh, the hearing for the application for the project on a project of 9319 plus or minus square foot retail building association improvements on property of Mill Village lot. Uh, what's 2930 map 132 special permit requested for the use of a commercial building C3 under the standards of section 5300. Okay. Mr. Chair, before we begin that, could yes. I, uh, uh, could, could we go over some procedural matters that, that have come to our my attention? Yes. Okay, that's John Sabersky. Please again, let's, um, so we can have our uh, scribe get the correct people's yes. names in. Thank you. Uh, John Staberski here. Uh, so there are uh, two matters, and one I think we should clarify when we, uh, as soon as we can, and that would be, um, I understand that Mr. Potter is now a full board member, and, um, and I think it raises a legitimate question as to who should be a voting member on, on this matter at this point. Okay, uh, comments by any other board members? Do you want me to say uh, why, what, uh, what my thoughts are on it? Well, you can, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna step in with uh, Attorney Costa to see what, uh, what he thinks we need to do on this. Okay. But you're welcome to speak, John, if, you're, if you wanna make some comments. Um, well, you know, so, I, so when I heard about this, I looked at the statute and 4812, I think, clearly provide that when you have a uh, when you have a, an associate member, and we have mislabeled them as alternates, they're really associate members of the ZBA. Uh, when someone uh, when someone is appointed as a full member, they become the voting member. Um, that's the way I read that statute. Uh, maybe, maybe attorney Costa differs with me, but I, you know, one of the things I've always wanted to do is make sure we're procedurally correct in everything that we do here. And that seemed to be how the law, uh, law states we should proceed. Okay. Any other board members responding? So Costa got a comment? Uh, yes. But I wanted comments from the board members first. The board closed closed the hearing and began to deliberate deliberate and there were uh, five people 
who are at that point were voting and to change it midstream, I, I don't know that that's a good idea. So. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Attorney Costa, comments? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and through you. So I, I, um, I appreciate this issue uh, is, is a topic of uh, question or concern, and, and it has been brought to my attention, as you might imagine, uh, uh, through, through, through word of mouth prior to tonight's meeting. So I've had an opportunity to give it a bit of thought and, and even to consult with uh, some, other, some other attorneys. Um, I, I agree with attorney uh, Mr. Staberski's reading of chapter 48, section 12. And in usual circumstances, the application of that section is not terribly complicated. If you've got a sufficient number of full regular members of a, of a public body, a, a zoning board, a planning board, um, that those regular members are the members that are entitled to vote. And typically when an associate member or as a, an alternate member uh, is tapped to vote on a matter, it's because of an instance of conflict of interest or uh, other, other grounds for recusal or illness or inability to attend meetings. And therefore, because uh, the, the public body, the board has lost its voting quorum uh, or the requisite uh, number of members to constitute a complete board, the alternate or associate member can step in and can perform that function. Um, what complicates this case, and, and you might remember, I know I said this to you, Mr. Chair, and I I think I said it in one of the early meetings back when we were conducting these meetings live, um, we talked about designating the voting members. And I know some attorneys advise boards to designate those voting members uh, in an instance where there is a recusal and there is a need for an alternate to be tapped to vote. Um, I know that some attorneys will say, designate that associate member at the, at the opening of the public hearing. Um, my perspective is a little different. I, I, don't, I don't advise against that if I've got a board that has done that as a matter of tradition, but I recommend if it's a multi, what is anticipated to be a multi-session public hearing, that it might be wise to wait until the public hearing is concluded uh, or close to being concluded before that member, that associate or alternate member is identified because you may have multiple associate members and there may be associate members that simply become ineligible to even vote themselves because they can't be present for more than one of those sessions of the public hearing. So that's what was done here. The uh, voting members, the, the, the four regular members and one associate member were identified at the close of the public hearing and the public hearing was voted to be closed. Uh, my concern now is, while I appreciate Mr. Stuberski's reading of 48.12 and I agree with it, this is a somewhat different circumstance because substituting a, a different alternate member who has since become a full-time regular member of the board as a voting member of a, of a matter that has since been closed, um, it, it concerns me because that individual was not a full member of the board when this matter was before the board at a public hearing. That individual was an alternate member and it was announced at the close of the public hearing that that was not the individual that was, was going to be voting in his capacity as an alternate. So while I certainly appreciate the argument and I can't point to, to a statute um, I can't point to a case because, as you might imagine, there's not case law that deals with this unique circumstance where after the, close of the public hearing, the very member who recused herself um, and therefore uh, uh, provided an opening, uh, a voting opening on the board, resigned from the board, resulting then in an appointment of one of the then sitting alternates to become the regular member who happened to not be the alternate that was previously identified as the voting member. That's a unique circumstance. There's not gonna be a case on point. Um, and so I, I can't tell you the statute doesn't address this circumstance. I can just tell you that as I read the statute, it speaks of membership of a board as membership during the proceeding that is underway. And that proceeding has all but concluded in the sense that the public hearing is closed and the voting members have been identified. So that's my perspective on, on the matter. But again, I can certainly appreciate that perspectives may differ. Uh, may I beg to differ with you, Attorney okay. Costa? Oh, oh, oh. John, hold it. Please identify yourself so we know what we're doing the minutes. John, St you. John Staberski, um, a member of the ZBA. Um, I, you know, I'm reading this statute, and if you read it literally, and I can, I'm, I can quote it here. It basically it says, and I'm going to read the last phrase of the first paragraph of section 12. In the event of a vacancy on the board, uh, 
until said vacancy is filled in the manner provided by this section. It essentially says that as soon as a new member, uh, as soon as we have a new member, then they are a member of the ZBA. And and I, if, if Mr. Potter was disqualified for not attending the meetings, for not being present, for uh, any other reason, I think that would be clearly appropriate. But he has been here. He's been part of the of the hearings. He's voted uh, up until two meetings ago when uh, the chair appointed Mr. Hershenretter. He was a full member. So other than the uh, blessing of uh, Mr. Sadowski, um, he, there, there's been no difference between Mr. Hershenretter and Mr. Potter. But now Mr. Potter is a full member of the board. And I hate to say it, Mr. Costa, but I believe the statute is quite clear. And maybe this is a different situation, but I think we are liable to be sued. That if, uh, if, if Mr. Potter, who is now a full member of the board and who has sat through all these proceedings is not permitted to vote. And as, as I said uh, through you, Mr. Chair, as I said a moment ago, I can appreciate that perspectives are different. I too, have the statute before me. I too am reading the last sentence of the first paragraph of chapter 40A, section 12. Um, again, my reading of that provision addresses the normal circumstance. It, it, it isn't even speaking. It doesn't even address the concept of um, a, a public hearing versus deliberations. Um, it, it's speaking of the, the proceeding that's underway. Um, I read it differently than you do. Again, I appreciate your interpretation. I don't think it's quite clear. Um, and uh, apparently based on you know the, the the few hours of, of uh, research I had an opportunity to do today in terms of reaching out to colleagues, um, I didn't speak to a, a single colleague who disagreed with my reading of it and, and uh, you know, my, my, my suggestion in terms of a manner of practice. But again, I, I appreciate that you may be of a different perspective and you're certainly entitled to, to, to have your opinion in that regard. Well, thank you, Mr. Carter. Any other board members have uh, comments? I Adam Sokolowski, I'm, I have no comment on this. I think what happened was is self-explainable, but um, I just want to say that I hope I can continue to serve on this board in the future. So I don't know if uh, Mr. Chair, you want to carry on with the meeting, well, or, I, or if we should, or if we should not. I I don't know. Uh, I just I don't have any right answers. I just I just try to do the right thing. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. I think in view of all the confusion and what have you tonight, I move we adjourn. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I, I don't want to usurp your authority. Certainly you can entertain any, any motion that's pending on right. the table. I, I do want to remind the board of a couple of things and, and one is sort of where we are in the process and I think that the motion to adjourn raises that as an issue. So you have a limited time frame within which to make a decision once you close a public hearing on an application for a special permit. You have a 90 day time frame that's by statute it's not unique to Deerfield it's something that is in, in chapter 48 of the zoning act. Um, if you fail to take action within that 90 day time frame, you risk a, a constructive approval of the project, which would be not just an approval, it would be an, an approval without condition. So I think that that is something that the board should be mindful of. Um, I don't think that um, the issue that was raised by Mr. Staberski, and I don't want to speak for him, um, is an issue that uh, necessarily prompts the question, should we be meeting tonight or what should occur? Um, it's a question of who should be ultimately voting on, on the decision. Um, and I, again, I defer to this board in deciding who you wish to appoint as a, a voting member, member, current member, former member, former alternate now member. That's a decision for the board. You've heard my advice in my legal position. You've heard um, the advice from, from Mr. Staberski uh, or, the, or his position on the issue. So, th but that, that doesn't go to the, the heart of the matter, which is you have an application before you. You either have to conclude the deliberative process in um, give some guidance to the chair, to council, to staff as to what sort of a decision you want drafted or else you risk a constructive approval of the project. The only other option, and it's one that we discussed at the last meeting, 
would be that if you feel there's new information you, you, you must consider in order to make a decision, you have the option of reopening the public hearing. I thought that that was made, uh, was, was, a, was a request made by one of your members last session. I made it clear that that was a possibility if that was the will of the board, but that was, uh, my recollection is that that motion didn't receive a second at the time. You can reconsider that, you can reopen the hearing, but unless the hearing is reopened, you're on that, you're on that clock and you've got a decision to make. So if you're going to adjourn tonight, you, you, you best adjourn and schedule a meeting to occur in the immediate future within maybe the next week. Um, I'm gonna look back at the dates now because I don't have the deadline in front of me, but I know it's fast approaching. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Potter, you had your hand up. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Potter. Is there a second? Oh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, we have, we have a motion. Um, could you hang on to that, Mr. Decker, for a minute, please? I just want to make the statement that a motion to adjourn uh, is not debatable. Okay. So if it's a second, okay. you can't debate it. Okay. Do we have a second on that motion? No, but I'd make, I, I'd amend, I'd move to amend the, that motion to reopen the public hearing. Uh, we can if we do that motion, I, I don't think we can amend a, um, a, 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 we can amend that, John. I don't think there's a, 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 amendments are allowed. Am I correct, Mr. Costa? If we, if we if we go to adjourn, that's end of discussion, correct? Right. So I, I, I want to make something clear here. So with, with respect to local municipal boards, boards of appeal and planning boards, the the legislative procedures that might apply to, you know, a, a town meeting don't necessarily apply. Robert's rules don't apply, you know, black letter law the way that they would to other proceedings. So much is left to the discretion of the chair. Um, yes, if you read Robert's rules literally, generally a motion to adjourn, which adjourn would adjourn the entire meeting. Um, so if you're adjourning the meeting, that would be a non-debatable motion, typically under Robert's rules. Uh, I can't say that I know many zoning boards of appeals that strictly follow those rules and would not allow a motion to adjourn to be debated, but that's left to your discretion, Mr. Chairman, not mine. Okay. Uh, I think, Mr. Potter, I think you had your hand up next, and then Mr. Sokolowski. Mr. Potter? Yeah, uh, I guess I'm not quite clear on where we are. Uh, the, the motion is up. Uh, I, I wasn't commenting on the motion. The, the conversation went elsewhere, so um, are, are we attending to the motion? Is there, is, I, I'm not sure where we are. Mr. Sokolowski. Mr. Sokolowski. Well, I would entertain, and I'm not seconding it right now, a motion to adjourn with another date. But we might wanna come back to that, Mr. Decker. I think, you know, we, we aren't supposed to be, Get, they're getting into too much information, but we know that the applicant has requested some continuance from other boards. Um, do they want to withdraw or continue or not? We all or or move forward, um, and then we can decide whether or not we want to adjourn to give Mr. Costa <clears throat> possibly more time. Or I mean, when I basically the way I listen to Mr. Costa. And, and please, attorney, correct me if I'm wrong, that you've already determined who's voting and it's the chairman's discretion. That's your advice as town council. Through you, Mr. Chairman. So, so yes, that's correct. If, if, if I believe that there was a, a strict conflict with the statute, I would say so. It wouldn't then be left to the discretion of the chair. But I think that in these circumstances, it was the discretion of the chair to identify the voting member from among the two alternates and in my interpretation of the statute, the fact that during deliberations, there was a, a, a resignation from the board and an appointment of the other alternate as a full member does not put that full member in the position of a voting member on a matter um, for which the public hearing was closed. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I address Mr. Donahue, please? Does the board have a problem with me addressing Mr. Donahue? No. Oh. Okay. Yes, yes, Mr. Donahue. Comments, please. Do uh, you want us to proceed forward? Are you going to withdraw? Um, uh, Mr. Sokolowski brought up a good point that you've gone to other meetings and, and asked for a continuance. So let's hear what you have to say. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, 
I think what we're looking for is, although we may not all agree on the substance of the petition, I think there ought to be a consensus that the applicant has gone through this process in good faith, has been patient through the public hearing process, has approached this application in a professional fashion, trying to present to this board the information it needs to decide whether to issue a special permit. And I think as a matter of basic fairness, at this point, the applicants entitled to a decision from the people you as chairman have indicated are going to make that decision. On the simple issue that's before you, as to whether in the weighing process that you've been through with Mr. Costa, a 5,400 square foot addition to a building on this lot, either the benefits outweigh the detriments or not. The fact that we may or may not be changing the specific location of certain items, which won't involve the building clearly, as part of the detailed site plan, doesn't go to the issue as a special permit as to whether you're going to permit the use of a larger building than is permitted as a matter of right. You can tie that to the plan you have before you. And if it ends up that that plan gets modified, we'll come back and you'll have to agree that the modification can occur. That's a reasonable condition that is generally imposed by Zoning Board of Appeals when there are other permits to be done. But there's detailed work to be done. It's an extended continuance before the planning board, longer than the applicant asked for, but that's okay. That's the process because of concerns the board had of its workload and the like, which is now out till June. We filed this petition, Mr. Chairman and members of the board with your board on December 9th of 2019. Now, COVID had an impact, but this isn't the largest development in the history of Deerfield. It's not that complicated, despite all the effort that's gone into it, as to the issue of the special permit on the addition. And I think we're entitled to that type of decision. You went through the debate last time. We didn't participate on reopening on the issue of the wetlands and everything else. You've heard all of that, frankly. You've heard all of that testimony through the hours of public testimony that you took. There's nothing reopening there. And there's nothing that changes the basic question of whether a 5,400 square foot addition is too burdensome to the neighborhood or not. I think we're entitled to a decision on that. I think we're entitled to move forward on it. And what I'm asking the board to do that this evening, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, Mr. Potter, your hand was up. Yes, thank you. Um, I guess I'm looking for some clarity on the process since I've seen in the law, the town bylaws uh, that there needs to be approval of the site plan by the planning board before a special permit can be granted. This is in 5418 of 263. This is part of the packet of special permits. Site plan review. Um, it says it is important to note that no building permit shall be issued by the building commissioner and or no special permit or variance shall be issued by the zoning board of appeals without the written approval of the site plan by the planning board. I don't think that's happened and I'm confused. Can anybody answer that? Mr. Costa, would you address that issue, please? Uh, sure, through you, Mr. Chairman. So um, I'm aware of the provision um, and I saw a, a quoting of it um, in some correspondence today, um, but the quote was incomplete. So I've, I've had an opportunity to review it and had that opportunity, frankly, even prior to, to tonight's meeting uh, and prior to today. So there is a provision, um, and this is not, again, unique to Deerfield. Many communities uh, have similar provisions in order to assure themselves that when applications are submitted to permitting authorities like zoning boards of appeal, for example, 
that there is an opportunity for the site plan review authority, typically the planning board, to get, uh, let's say, a, a first bite at the apple, an opportunity to at least uh, give the, the plan a review and potentially, if it's not too complicated to plan, even approve it before it goes before the Zoning Board of Appeals. So the specific provision in your bylaw, and I've, I've seen the reference made to um, whatever section it was that Mr. Potter referenced, 54, 18 maybe. Um, I'm looking at the version of the code that I have, which I think is the up-to-date version, it ought to be. Um, and I, I see it in section 5421, not in 5418, but 5421, which is not in, not in a section that addresses the authority of the ZBA, uh, but rather a section that addresses procedural requirements for site plan review. It says no building permit shall be issued by the building inspector and or no special permit or variance shall be issued by the Board of Appeals without written approval of the site plan by the planning board, comma, or unless 60 days lapse from the date of submittal of the site plan without action by the planning board. So um, again, it's a more extensive than what I saw quoted today. So the first, I see a, a number of problems with this particular, it's not as clear as some might think it is. The, the and or, for example, between uh, the, the issuance of a building permit by the building inspector and the issuance of a special permit or a variance by the ZBA um, concerns me. I, I'm not sure what, why that says and or. If, if it means and, it should say and. If it means or, it should say or. Um, it's certainly, I would concur that building permits should never issue until all other underlying permits and approvals have been received. Um, that's, that's sort of black letter law and is a requirement of the, the building code and most zoning ordinances and bylaws. Um, with regard to special permit or variance, that's a, potentially a little different, but without getting into some of these more technical legal arguments, the second phrase that I read, the second part of that sentence, or the passage or, or in less 60 days lapse from the date of submittal of the site plan, you know, this site plan is before the planning board has been before the planning board for some time. It was submitted originally more than a couple of years ago, was denied, was appealed to, to land court, uh, was back on remand. It was uh, the, the remand order. I can't recall the exact date without searching for it, but I want to say it was in August or September um, and the, the hearing uh, reopened sometime after that. Um, the hearing has been open, the hearing itself has been open for more than 60 days and that 60 day period is is really calculated from the date of quote unquote submittal. So in terms of whether the ZBA, if what's being asked is, can the ZBA ask on, act on this permit or can it sort of try to hang its hat on this provision? I wish I could give you an easy out and say, yes, you can hang your hat on this provision and say, sorry, we're prohibited from taking action, but that's simply not what the provision says. So I, I don't think it's, it's quite that simple. Um, I think it's more complicated than that. I think that in an ideal world, again, I, I suspect it's the norm with simpler projects, application for site plan approval gets submitted to the planning board. It gets reviewed at one, maybe two meetings and that review is completed uh, even before the, the application is, is acted upon or, or, or maybe even submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's probably the norm. This project's a little different. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair, Tversky, yes. Yeah, with, with all due respect, Attorney Costa, you didn't read the last little phrase of that sentence um, uh, so I will, uh, you know, I'll read that because I think it makes a big difference when we're talking about the 60 days. Um, so it says no building permit shall be issued by the building inspector and or no special permit or variance shall be issued by the board of appeals without the written approval of the site plan by the planning board or unless 60 days lapse from the day of the submittal of the site plan. And this is what you left out without action by the planning board. So uh, if you take, if you look at that last phrase and how it, how it interprets or relates to the rest of the sentence, if the planning board doesn't act on something within 60 days, then the ZBA is not bound by that restriction. That's the way I read that, that particular sentence. Uh, if it just stopped a period without the, without that last phrase, without action by the planning board, I'd agree with you, but that last, last phrase modifies it and, and really suggests that if the planning board doesn't act within 60 days, then, then, then that particular provision doesn't apply. Uh, am I reading something wrong here or is, is that an accurate reading of that sentence? Um, so, Mr. Mr. Chairman, through yes. you. So, um, so I didn't think that I had left that out. I certainly hadn't meant to leave that out. I've got it highlighted on the version I'm looking at here, the entire sentence. Um, I'm not following exactly your argument. So I, I agree it says without action by the planning board. 
um, planning board generally has two options with respect to a site plan application submitted to it. It can approve the application or it can deny the application for very limited reasons, failure to submit the application fee, failure to submit the required uh, information for the application to be complete. Um, or of course it can take no action. Um, if it takes no action under your bylaw because there is a time frame within within which the planning board must act, there's the potential for constructive approval there too. Um, I'm not so, sure that- So what, that's, what that, so that's what I think the 60 days speaks to is really a constructive approval. The 60 days without no action is really saying a constructive approval in different words. So if there is a constructive approval uh, uh, by the planning board because of no action on a site plan review, then that then that prohibition of us of not having a planning board approval for us to vote is is non actionable. So, you know, I, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why I'm, I mean, I read this over and this is something that's concerned me from day one on this is is the strategy of the applicant and not having the full conservation commission and, uh, uh, approvals and the planning board approvals kind of leaves us as a special permitting granting authority without all the information we could possibly have to weigh the benefits and detriments. And, uh, and particularly in light of the fact of, of, of stormwater that I think is a, is a real legitimate issue that I'd like to bring up that we don't have the benefit of the decisions of that in order for us to, to render our decision. So that's why I think that phrase is in there so that the ZBA would have all the information it needs and from all the other boards in town to make a decision. And if the planning board doesn't want to act, we can, we can act. Um, that, that's, that's how I'm reading that. Okay, Mr. Sokolowski, you had your hand up. Well, we have Mr. Costa for 20 more minutes. Do we want to take up and, and vote on this? Do or I have a motion? Adjourn, or do we want to adjourn? Or I don't know how if Mr. Costa is coming back or he's done at seven and we deal with the other matter. I. Well, I, I'd like to see if I answer my question, answer the issue I just raised. Adam. Okay, hold it, John. Do I have a motion to vote? Do I have a motion to vote? Well made. Okay, Mr. Decker. Yes. Mr. De Mr. Decker, do you make a motion? Yes. You may, Mr. Decker has a motion to vote. Do I have a second? I will second it. Let's move on and see what happens. Mr. Decker. Yes. Okay. All right. We're going through a vote right now. Let, let's. Can we discuss this first? I guess we can. I don't see a problem with that. Anyone else have a problem with it? Well, I I just want to bring up uh, <clears throat> conditions. Yeah, um, we're. I think we're jumping. Well, if Ad, Adam, sorry. If we were to grant the special permit then I would like to add beside the sign conditions that we already talked about that seems like the applicant is willing to work with. I would like to add under the environment, some additional conditions. Um, one being that all of the stormwater requirements and conservation requirements are met. And I would also like to encourage or instruct the, the, the applicant to use renewable energy, to add solar panels and source things as locally as possible when reasonable. Um, I think those are all important things in our community. And I think that those conditions should be able to be met by the applicant within a statute, within a, within a reasonableness standard. Obviously, um, I, I would leave that up to Mr. Costa and the applicant to work out because we have, if we do vote to approve it, then we have uh, 10 days for the conditions to get worked out. Um, and, and, and that's where I am. I, I'm, that's all I have. Okay, anyone else for conditions? No, I would like to, I'd like to, I'd like to talk about opposing your motion. Uh, I, think, I think this is a railroad. I think this, this is premature. I don't think you're giving people enough time to 
to voice their issues as to whether it should be approved or not. I mean, there's one issue that I would still like to bring up. At the last meeting, uh, Mr. Costa finally got a decision that the hydrologist uh, opinion that that opined that the uh, that the information that we've based our decision on with respect to stormwater and wetlands is in is inaccurate. We uh, uh, an esteemed hydrologist said it was misqualified. We know that's been an issue in town. I think that letter should be brought to the attention of this board. We should look at it. We should think about it. Uh, and I think one of, because one of the main issues is that this project could cause significant flooding on North Main Street. Um, at least according to that hydrologist, there's a, a real risk that this could exacerbate the conditions on Bloody Brook and affect numerous homeowners, cause numerous damage in town. And, and, and because of the way this was staged by the applicant, we don't, we're not able to really vet that issue. And Attorney Costa said at the very end of la the last hearing that this is finally an evidence. And I think if it's an evidence, we need to think about it, talk about it, and, uh, and decide if that expert's report is valid. Uh, and if it is valid, then the premise upon uh, the environmental concerns that we pre presented is inaccurate. And because it's inaccurate, uh, uh, we should not go forward with this hearing and at least reopen the evidence so we can consider whether this is gonna cause Bloody Brook to flood. I mean, that's our job. We need to do that. Uh, and, and I know there's a motion on the floor um, and I know it's been seconded, but uh, rather than hear that motion, I would move that we reopen the hearing to, to consider the issue, not of the, everything, but just of the environmental concerns that, that have been raised uh, in, that, in that new evidence that was submitted, uh, that was finally uh, submitted as something we could consider. Um, so I would, I would make that motion and see if I get a second. Well, I think the issue we have here is Mr. Costa is we have a motion on a motion. And I think we need to clarify the first motion first before we take on, take on a second motion. Am I correct? Mr. Chair, you're right. Yeah. There's a motion on the floor. I, I guess that I'm not entirely clear, to, to, be, to be honest. The motion on the floor, is it to approve the project? The, no, the, the motion on the floor is to take a vote. A vote the on vote, what? On, on approval for this, whatever so, this was. So we've had a second. I well, have Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, yeah. I, if, if I'm if I'm misunderstanding, I fear that the public may may not understand either. Yeah, uh, I asked what the motion is on the floor and you said it's a motion to vote to take action. I understand that to take action. On what? OK, I'm going to read what the action is going to be. OK. Am I correct in doing that? Yes. OK. <clears throat> Let me get my glasses. It's a public hearing for a commercial building proposed development of construction on 9319 plus or minus square feet of a retail building on the associated site. Improvements on the property located on Mill Village, map 132, lot 2930. A special permit is requested for the proposed retail use of the commercial C11 district under the standard section 5300. Now, if we vote for this, what it means is if you vote yes, you vote that you think that all the criteria has been, have been met successfully, and we will issue a, um, I guess what you want to call it, um, the, uh, the, the permit. So, Mr. Chairman, if I could. So, so that answers my question, and that, that, that's what to be, to be yeah. that I was afraid right. of. Right. So, that's why I went through, if you vote yes, this is what you're voting for. Right, okay. and, and, I, and I have to strongly advise the board, I've said it before, that this is not the proper procedure. I understand that the board, um, that this has been a lengthy process and the, the board yep. may want to bring it to a close and believe me, as do I. Um, but the, the process at this point after more than a year of public hearings um, should not be to vote to approve without having a draft decision before you. I've said that before. This is far too 
um, enforcement <laughs> project, whether you're a yay or a nay vote, far okay. too many project. There will be far too many conditions to try and verbalize uh, during a, a session of deliberation. So if the motion on the floor is to, is to approve the project, I would, I would strongly advise against that sort of a motion. If you're, if you're prepared to, to not entertain any further motions for new information or for reopening the hearing and you're prepared to vote yay or nay, you should minimally do nothing more than vote to instruct staff and the chairman and council to draft a decision. Okay. I, I, I understand what you're saying. The project. I well, withdraw my motion. Mr. Chairman, I withdraw yeah. my motion. Then, then I would move that we reopen the hearing to consider environmental evidence. Uh, or any oh, person hasn't John removed Murphy. Okay, so we, we, we withdraw the motion to vote. Okay, now, Mr. Stabriska, I think you had a comment. Yes, I, I would like to move that we reopen the, uh, reopen the public hearing in order to consider the, uh, the, the evidence that was submitted late. I don't know if, I, if you want me to go through the history of it, but there is this letter from Attorney Alio that had a hydrologist report that was filed just under the gun. Uh, Attorney Costa said at the last meeting that it is part of our record. And the hydrologist report has stated that the, that the information we got from the applicant was wrong, that as a result of it being wrong, there are wetlands on the site and that it could cause flooding because of the runoff from the parking lot in the building, Bloody Brook. Now that is new information and I think we should consider that and reopen this, uh, this proceeding to- no, uh, uh, All right, we voted on this once before, John, and it, you didn't get a second. You didn't vote on this, not this motion. It, it, well, we opened to reopen the meeting. We said, well, I know you're changing the wording. Do I have a second on this? Uh, I have a question for Attorney Costa if this came in the uh, realm of our progress where I would have been uh, able to second a motion because it was not before the closing of the public hearing and it was before the designation of voters was made. I, th I, think, I, I think I understood the question, so through you, Mr. Chair. Um, Yes, if, if this issue had been raised earlier and you were a full member or a designated member, yes. But at, at this point, the motion is being made and the voting members have been identified by the chair. Well, it was raised and I was shouted down by the chair. I don't know if you call that. I don't know. Oh, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I, 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 I'm offended by the term shouted down. I asked you, 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 to, I asked you to refrain. To, not to be noticed, and I ask you to restrain yourself. So that's what was done. You're not shouted down. I ask you calmly not to respond. But okay, my Mr. Answer, Mr. Costa, Mr. Costa, do you have a response to that? So I, ju I just provided my response. I mean, this is okay. a motion that is being made at this stage in the proceedings. I can't, I, I can't speak to you know what occurred previously in the proceedings. It doesn't affect what the motion that's now on the floor. Okay, so we're back to, do we have a second for Mr. Stavarsky's motion by the voting members at this time? You know, mm -hmm. I would plead with you guys, somebody second it. This is, this is so damn important for our town. I can't believe that this board does not want to consider this stuff and look at it and think John. about it. John. Okay. Adam Sokolowski. We got the ruling from Mr. Costa. I've read that thing over about 14 times that we can absolutely consider it and talk about it. We don't need to reopen the public hearing. Mr. Costa said it was submitted to the town hall. You can absolutely. I read that thing with a fine tooth comb and tie, tie and bonds back and forth. I've considered it. But Mr. Garabedian, that expert was it. at our hearing and he was ready to testify. And it was ruled that he, that, that was too late to be considered. And now we found that it should have been considered. And we have not had the benefit of his of his wisdom that we should have had back then. And I think this is I think it's a procedural defect in in, in our 
in this matter and that, uh, you know, we're liable to get sued for it. But, I, but that doesn't really matter. It's what's best for the town. And the best what's best for the town is to look at all the information and then make the decision, not keep things siloed and not look at them and put our blinders on. Uh, he's willing to testify. He's willing to tell us what he thinks. Why not listen to him? Do so I have a second to open the, to reopen the, the, the meeting? Okay. Request is denied. Motion sure. denied. Okay. Just, just yes, to Mr. Decker. I would make a motion that we instruct council together with the chairman to draft the decision to grant the necessary permits for the project, for the petitioner's project. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Decker. I'm, I'm, this whole procedure is new to me. Uh, it's more of a legal issue. When I met a vote, I meant we need to instruct. I will second, Mr. Okay. And I, I will second. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Sokolowski. After a motion is seconded, then there can be discussion. Okay. 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 All right. I, I've seconded the motion. All right. Um, I want, Mr. Costa, my, when we talked, did you have to have a clear picture of what the board is going to do, is what my understanding was. I guess I missed named it when I said took a vote. I guess it's a straw feeling that you have to have whether we proceed for a yay or nay. Am I correct? Um, so Mr. Chair, it's not a feeling. It's it's exactly what Mr. Decker said in his motion. It's, it's a motion to instruct council and the okay. chair, I would say staff as well, to work cooperatively to craft a decision. And that decision would be an approval, I think is what the motion said. Um, maybe I, I think that's what was, maybe it was a yeah, problem. That was, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and so that would be drafted for the board's consideration. The board can review that at a future deliberation session and vote it if it believes it's in final form and appropriate. The board can make changes to it if there are gaps or misstatements that, that I've included based upon my notes and record of proceedings. The board can decide when it sees the approval reduced to writing that it shouldn't be approving it after all and decide that it really wants to deny it. So nothing is final until it's final. And this is sort of a... a uh, sort of the, the, the final step before you you prepare yourselves to vote yay or nay on the project. Okay, okay so um, so we're gonna take a, I guess I'm gonna call Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Decker. No, 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 no. no this is Alex. Um, oh, sorry, Alex. <laughs> so could I just add to that motion um, something with uh, conditions so that that yes. can be part of That's that? Just that's part of it. Oh, okay. All right. I just want to make sure. Thank you. Uh, this Adam talking. Alex, this is the time to instruct our yeah. council. Yeah, no, I, um, yeah, I, I would agree with you, Adam, on the conditions that you brought up a few minutes ago, the sign. Um, I know we haven't really discussed that, but I think that would be uh, something. And the environmental issues that uh, Adam mentioned. And remember, we can still vote this down. We can still vote no. Mr. Costa needs to work with Mr. Donahue and come back to us. We should, we should, uh, we all made our, our feelings known last, last meeting and we should have just formalized this. Um, and we would have been ahead of the game. We would have saved the last hour. Okay. But uh, I would like, uh, so Mr. Costa can get out of here. We should set a date that works for him to come back okay. when him and staff. Um, we need, uh, Are we gonna have a vote on this? Yeah, yeah we need to vote on it. Vote on this after we know what we're you know completely voting on. Well, we know what we're voting on. We're voting on instructing uh, Mr. Costa to write up an approval of the special permit with conditions that we've asked for. And then he's going to put, put that in writing and put that in front of us. And if we don't I, like, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about conditions until it's voted for approval, because I, I disagree with this and I have a number of conditions if you guys are going to prove it, but I, I, you know, I don't, not going to put that card out there until it's, until it's a voted for approval. Well, well I, conditions yeah, you want to add, John, I mean, I think John, well, well, let's not talk over each other, please. Uh, Mr. Decker, I think you had a comment next. Well, my comment is, if John has some other conditions that he was willing to accept, he should put them on the table and let council know what they are, so everybody understands. So, so when we do come back to the next meeting, we have a 
a decision that everybody can read and understand. I'm, I'm happy to do that, but I'd like a vote on this first with conditions, and then we can review conditions because, you know, I don't want my, um, my uh, suggesting conditions to be, cons to be considered whatsoever as uh, an approval of this project. I think it's, I, I think this board's making a terrible mistake, but if it's going to be a mistake, I'll try to, I'll try to make sure it's, it's a lesson. Um, so uh, you take a vote and then I think we should talk about conditions afterwards. Okay. So we're back to, we're going to take and take a vote to direct Adam Coster, our attorney, to draw up conditions for this project. Am I correct, Mr. Costi? Is that the terminology I should use? That's I don't think you should use any terminology, Mr. Chairman. The, 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 the motion's already been made, so it's the motion, however that was phrased, and I believe it was to instruct counsel, uh, to the chair, to draft a decision to approve the project with conditions. Okay. That motion can be voted, and then a discussion okay. can occur. I, as has been indicated, I've got to drop off at seven o'clock, but you can discuss conditions if that motion passes. Okay, so uh, obviously those conditions can be communicated to me. Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go first, and I'm gonna say yes. Move forward, uh, Mr. Sokolowski. Yes, uh, move forward, but let the record reflect that if if the conditions aren't met then we still have the opportunity to deny the project. Okay, thank you. Mr. Decker. Yes. Um, Alex. Yes. Yes. And John. No. Okay, thank you. And, and I'd like to ask one other question. If Mr. Potter, if you were allowed to vote today, what would your vote have been? I don't think that should be allowed. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to allow that, John. I, I don't think that's appropriate right well, now. Well, he, he should have been the voting member here. No, John, that's your opinion. We've been through this. We, our, our attorney has said we've picked the people. We're going to stay with that. Okay. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Mr. Sokolowski has a comment. I, I don't have a comment. I have a question. I think we uh, yeah. have an, another item on the agenda tonight, so we should move on to that. Um, can I just run through my conditions real quickly? With oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, John. Sorry about that. Okay. So uh, I think here, here are the conditions. One is um, is we should be concerned with trash. Uh, we heard we heard reports from uh, the residents. They were concerned with animals uh, being around trash. So we should make sure the trash is in sealed containers. We should make sure that deliveries are scheduled so that there are no two deliveries at the same time. So there'd be traffic congestion backing up on five and 10. Um, that if <coughs> this project, any of, the, um, any of the elements change in site plan review, location of the building, location of the driveway, if there are wetlands that this comes back before the board for a full approval, that there should be no signage on state land and that the applicant agrees never to modify or, uh, or, uh, or change the floral and fauna on the state land in front of it. That, uh, that these, uh, th th this uh, applicant has put nice fake windows on some of their other facilities. I think one in Bernston has them. And the residents who have to live with this thing are going to be looking at should look at like foul windows in the back and the side so it looks more like a building rather than looking like an industrial complex um i think uh, adam had brought up this this uh item before but with respect to um outdoor displays there be no outdoor displays or anything outdoors other than propane tanks that there should be a bike rack there and I think there should be an EV charging station uh, as well. Um, and, and those are those are the conditions that, that I'd suggest. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. I, I think on the third thing that Mr. Suckle, Mr. Staberski mentioned, uh, I would think if, if it was a significant change, but not any change. Okay. And then on the last one about the charging station, I think that's an unreasonable request. 
be nice to have, but I think it's unreasonable to make uh, the petitioner put a charging station in. If you want to do it, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, Mr. But Decker, I I'm, I'm not sure what the electrical code says on that because there's been some changes now about areas and parking lots that may have to have charging stations. And I have to check with the latest uh, uh, electrical code, but I believe they're requiring some of these now in a, in a lot of places. And I don't know if that applies to this situation or not. Mr. Well, Sokolowski. if it does fine, doesn't, I don't know that we should put that burden on them. Okay, uh, Mr. Sokolowski, question, comment. Well, I, I do, I know that uh, Adam Costa was gonna look back to the minutes and I appreciate John uh, on those. Um, conditions and you know i think that what what i'm looking for is the applicant to do what's reasonable and i think an electric vehicle charging station i mean i think that that's not necessarily unreasonable i mean i think there's a lot of money out there for the applicant whether there's grants and other things that that could benefit them and i think us asking for that just shows our community members that we care about these things that's why i put in you know, to, to ask for, you know, renewable energies, possibly, you know, roof mounted solar. And, you know, if the applicant can't work with Adam Cost and can't come up or can't work with our town hall staff to show us why it would be unreasonable for them to do it, then, you know, that might be a deal breaker for me. Um, you know, and I just think that um, these are good conditions. And I think that we're better off conditioning a project to make you know, what is not necessarily wanted as most palatable as it can be. And for some people it's, 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 you know, not, but um, then to adjourn or to stop the process or not regulate the process at all. So um, I know the, that consideration is take is taken in. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Mr. Decker. What, what are the proposed hours that the charging station would be operational. Um, would it be people in there at two o'clock in the morning charging their cars? Good question. I would think it'd only be during the hours of the uh, business being open. I just thought I'd bring it up. So. Okay, but that's a good, that's a legitimate question. Uh, and I think the order of conditions for changes can be, um, can be cumbersome in the fact of, well, they change where they put the, the uh, bike rack or whatever i think we can look at changes but i think they need to be significant changes not superficial changes um but that board will have to decide that okay miss garnett question comment it's uh miss gannett um, um John, <laughs> if you could send me um those conditions so that or anybody that has conditions so that you know i can work with council with them that would be All I have to say. Okay, Mr. Costa, are we all pretty well set with this right now? Are you comfortable with what we've done so far? You're. I'm muted, uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. So, uh, I certainly have sufficient information from the board. I, I've, I've taken uh, careful notes throughout the process, and I took notes specifically during the deliberations. And so, I have information from the individual board members. Uh, concerning their various positions on the six criteria, the six factors that we referenced throughout the throughout the public hearing process, I can obviously use that information to to craft a decision. Um, with respect to conditions, uh, I don't know that I have enough to craft specific conditions that address specific issues uh, that that you may have with this particular project. We've got standard conditions that uh, the board has included, uh, the town has included, other permitting authorities have included. Uh, in its decisions from time to time. And obviously those would be a part of whatever I would, I would draft for you. But in terms of specific conditions that are tailored to the, the, the project that's now before you, um, unless they've been referenced th through the course of the public hearing and they appear in my notes, um, I wouldn't know what to include. So I think that whether you wanna elaborate upon those now and I can take some careful notes or you want to discuss those when the, the, the framework of the decision is before you at a future meeting, that's up to you. You obviously couldn't schedule that future meeting to be a day before your, your the expiration of your 90 day deadline if you intend to engage in significant substantive discussion at the meeting that will result in 
one, two, three, four, a dozen different conditions that then have to be worked into a decision and finalized. So it's really up to your board. I do wanna make one point that I think is important to clarify because I've heard a couple of members reference me working with Mr. Donahue and me um, uh, proposing things to Mr. Donahue and seeing you know, that this is gonna be a condition unless the applicant can explain to us why it is they can't do this. The, the time has come and gone for that, that back and forth. I can certainly have some limited contact with the applicant's counsel through this process. That is not unusual in crafting a decision. If I need clarity on something that I review in the record to be sure that the decision is consistent with what's going to be constructed, what's going to, how the property is going to be used. But in terms of a back and forth, we wanna propose this condition. Does this work for you? And if it doesn't, explain to us why it doesn't work for you that ship is sort of sailed because the public hearing is closed. And much like the board can't consider new information, you can't consider new information that comes in through me by me communicating with the applicant. That would be the same thing, except you're using me as a straw and that doesn't work either. So I'm certainly happy to craft conditions based on feedback from board members, based on what's in the record, based on prior comments, but I can't solicit new information from the applicant either. Okay, Mr. Sokolowski, comment? Uh Yes, through, uh, it's more for Mr. Costa. I, I get what you're saying um, for writing things up. I guess my position on, I'm sorry, working with you, maybe not necessarily working with the applicant, but the wording um, I think is your best expertise. I'm not, that's why we're having you write it. Is it a violation of the open meeting law if we submit things to you in writing? Um, or should we submit them to Jennifer? We not different than what we said, but more, maybe more in detail or specific on the conditions. Because I think John's conditions are very good, and I think that he can do a very good job articulating them if he can submit them to you in writing. Jen just asked for that, um, or, or you know, where where that comes up, and then we have a draft decision that comes back to an open meeting uh, from you. Is, is that correct, Mr. Costa? Correct. So through you, Mr. Chair, that, that is that process you outlined is acceptable. I, I always recommend because it, it makes it easier for me and it creates the public record that if individual board members want to send me proposed conditions, proposed components, uh, findings that make their way into a decision, that they do that through staff. So if you if you individually wish to submit lists of possible conditions to Jennifer, she can pass those in turn along to me. I can then work those into a draft decision. What I can't do, what I cannot do, is I can't take various comments from different board members, compile them into a single decision, and then circulate that decision in advance of a board meeting, unless I were to say post it on the website or something. It needs to be available to the public simultaneously with me disclosing it. So I can do it in a public forum like the website, or I can put it, I can bring it to a future meeting. I simply can't, I can't compile comments from multiple members and then exchange them amongst members because then in the same way that I described before, I'm acting as a conduit to facilitate an open meeting law violation. It's, it's really difficult to work within the confines of the open meeting law, but the law is what it is. Okay, Adam, you have another comment? Uh, well, I would like to make a motion to formalize this. I would like a motion that uh, board members with requests for conditions um, be uh, submit them to uh, Ms. Gannett at town hall no later than the end of business on the 19th of uh, January, 2021. And then we reconvene, um, for, then that that's, gives us a time I, and um, to reconvene, we should set a meeting date of, um, or, of maybe the first or our regular meeting in February. Um, would be the 11th of February, but I think that might be too long uh, based on what we said earlier. So <clears throat> I'll, ref I'll withdraw what I just said. I'll make a motion that we um, reconvene on the 21st of January with a draft condition. Is that time frame workable? Okay, Alex, is that all right with you? You want to reconvene on the 21st and to talk about uh, more conditions? No, to, well, review, to review the draft. Uh, um, yeah, that's that's fine if that's enough time for Mr. Costa. And to, and to vote on. If the, if the draft looks good, we could possibly vote then or not. Jen has her hand up, Bernie. Yeah, Jen? 
Yeah, um, we have already other meetings that evening on the 21st. So, and I'm not sure if that's enough time, Mr. Costa, Attorney Costa to-, to... When do our meetings start, Jen? I have a 6.30 and I have a six o'clock. So, so Jennifer and, and Mr. Chair, I, I, I can certainly put something together. I'm not concerned about the time frame. I can okay. prioritize it and I will. I'm unavailable on the 21st, however. So uh -huh. the time frame doesn't concern me. The date is the only date I'm already booked. I'm so, sorry. Okay. Only how, how about Monday the 25th? 25th. Um, I have one meeting, but I can do that, I believe. Uh, Casey? If you're listening, just text me. Is there another one other than the personnel board on the 25th? Well, don't we have till the February 10th for this? To, 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 right. So my concern is, though, I'm sorry, I, I can fit. My concern, Mr. Staberski, is that if we have to make revisions to the draft, I have we, a on the. I have two meetings on the on the 25th. I don't. I don't, I don't want us to have to go past. The, the February that February date. So if we have revisions, if some people aren't, if we need to do some tweaking, I think we need another week. In Can between, we, that's just my. That's why I don't want to. I want to get the draft in a public meeting for us to discuss publicly, with a week to spare. So I think. So, so let's move backwards. If we have to do it on the tenth, let's schedule a meeting uh, close to the tenth, the ninth or the tenth, and then. Oh. What, what in between there? That'd be the that'd be the final approval, and we'd have one in, in between someplace. Mr. Chairman, how about um, yeah. Mr. Decker? Haven't we scheduled a training session for the 9th of February at six uh, o'clock? I, I think that's going to take a back. You know what? We need to do this first, and we'll no, we're all going to we're all going to volunteer that night, Mr. Decker. I hear what you're saying. We could maybe do this before. Before or after? That's what I'm the third Okay. Yes, Jen, go ahead. Third of February. That that I'll make the motion for the third of February if if I can if that works for Mr. Staberski and Mr. Hershenreder. At six o'clock. At six p.m. Does six p.m. work for you, John? It does. All right. I'll make a motion that we. Submit Adam, our record, huh? Adam Costa, does that work for you at six o'clock on the third of February? It does. Okay, so I'll make the motion that we have until January nineteenth at four p.m. to submit our requests in writing for conditions to Miss Gannett, and that we allow until February third at six p.m. to reconvene with that draft. Uh, to continue this hearing. Uh, Adam, can I, could I ask you to change? I mean, I have a lot of stuff going on within four or five days. And if you have three weeks or two and a half weeks to the hearing, I don't think we need that much time for the-, the Okay, uh, how about- uh, the, About the 27th or, or, the, or the 22nd? Uh, the, 20, the, the, 20, the 22nd, the Friday the 22nd? Or the twenty seventh, one of those days. Yeah, just uh, just you only you only really giving three or three or four days, and um, you know I, it's something I'd like to put some thought into and don't rush into it. Uh, does the twenty eighth work for you? It does. Twenty eighth is great. Adam, does the twenty eighth work for you? No, no. This is to get your comments to you, Jen. Oh, oh, comments. Oh. The, the meeting is the third. I just want to put a deadline on so that you know and Adam know when you can when you've got all the comments from the board, so you can start working on the draft. How about the how about the twenty second? That gives another about a week and a half to do the draft. So that 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 okay, Adam? Okay, so I will withdraw what I previously stated. And I, Adam Sekolowski, will make a motion that all conditions should be submitted in writing to Miss Gannett no later than 4 p.m. on Friday, the 22nd of January, 2021, to allow Miss Gannett and Mr. Costa to create a draft approval with conditions to be heard on February 3rd, 2021, starting at 6 p.m. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Seconded. Seconded. Okay. A vote. Who seconded it for the record? I, uh, Mr. Decker. 
Okay. The vote? Vote, Bernie. Vote. I'm writing this down here. It's not on this paperwork. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Decker? Yes. Mr. Sokolowski? Yes. Uh, I vote yes. Alex? Yes. And Mrs. Tversky? Oh, yes. Yes, okay. So we are going to have information turned in on January 22nd by 4 p.m., which is a Friday. And we'll hold our next meeting on February 3rd at six o'clock. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Okay, that's been approved. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, I think, Adam, you're all set with this? I am. Adam Costa, you're all set? Yes. Anything else? Um, Get a hold of the office and get a hold of me. I don't know which help I'm going to be, but I'll try. Any other comments by anybody before we uh, move on to our next? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yeah. propose we have a 15 minute recess. Okay. Um, do I have a second? All right. Well, we should make a motion to adjourn or not adjourn, a motion right. to move on to recess. business in 15 minutes. Re recess for 15 minutes. Yes. Mr. Yes. Tversky? Yes. Nod your head, yes. Mr. Sokolowski? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And I said yes. Yeah. You said yes. Okay. <laughs> so we'll convene at about uh, 7.32 or 4 when there. Thank you. That's fine. At 7, 7.35, uh, opening the meeting for public hearing. Application of Dale Whitney for a special permit to the change of use of 250 Greenfield Road to a multi-dealer antique and collectible store, map 122, lot 24. Is Miss Whitney or someone representing her present? No, nope, she's not here. I'm a little surprised by that. I do want to let you know that when she went before the planning board, they did continue it. Um, my suggestion to the planning board was that there was inadequate information on her application. Um, she's not here. So did anybody have a chance to look at her application and her information? I did. I did. Yep. Um, I didn't see any uh, real problem, but they've got some issues with uh, septic and and some other things there about the building so but i think those need to be addressed by her and by the uh, building inspector and the, the board of health i wanted a more complete plan i wanted something on the application it's something that the planning board and the zoning board can waive however i think that it's a standard that we should move forward with in the future that we have a um a licensed engineer or uh landscape like an architect or somebody that's that's stamping off on the plan to make sure that it, it has adequate um, means of egress and safety and uh, occupancy and then the septic, you know, like we need somebody that's licensed and a professional um, to stamp on the plans. And so I requested that at the planning board. And my understanding is that there was residency above this. There is. There, there is now, correct? Is. And is that going to continue? We don't know. So she's not here. She said that it is, but I'm not going to speak on behalf of her. Okay. She's All right. we, we need to have her here, I guess. So it's going to be a mixed use um, building. Okay. So, you know, talking about, you know, getting uh, paperwork from the fire department. And uh, I thought Bob was going to come on the call too, and I don't see him. Um, Bob Walden. The Walden. <laughs> Just because of having, you know, is it something that the the, the building, um, because of the change of use, needs to be sprinklered and alarmed, and um, you know, just well, Jennifer, my understanding is is that there's a footprint requirement of so many square feet now has to have a integrated um, sprinkler system. So I don't know. That's that's for someone else's expertise, but I believe it's in there. Okay, any other comments by the board members? 
uh, Mr. Sokolowski. Well, if the applicant's not here, does the town have any way to reach out to them? Or should we continue it? I, I don't think we should take action second guessing, you, you know, without the applicant present. So we should probably schedule it for for the future. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's too bad they're not here. I don't know if there's a contact. Yeah, we can get in contact with her. I mean, she did sign a continuance by doing an electronic signature for the planning board. So I'm not sure I wasn't involved with that. That was Sue. So um, I can reach out um, and and see where the miscommunication. I just don't want it since this was posted as a public hearing. Is there any members of the public that want to speak for or against it? I don't want to have to have. I want to procedurally make sure that we don't need to repost this. Right. So if anybody in the public wants to raise their hand, I can promote you to make any comment on on this. Um, Okay, so Lily wants to say something, so I'm going to um, promote her to speak. Hi, I'm Lily Dwight of South Mill River Road, and I attended her presentation at the planning board. And I just wanted to say that this sounds like a great thing, and, and it'd be wonderful to see this building utilized again. And she, I mean, you can't base any decisions on this, but she has no plans to change the footprint and stuff like that. So I just think it sounds like a really wonderful thing for our town. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments? I don't see anybody else asking. Okay. Um, David, I have a question for you. Me? Yes. You were sworn in already, I assume. Were you sworn in once? Okay, so you so because you'll be the, on these situations now, since you've been appointed as a, a full board member, you will be now voting on these issues from now on. Mm -hmm. But you've been sworn in, so then. I have been sworn in prior to this, and I also was sworn in today based on the decision okay. last night. Okay, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, that answers my question. Okay, if we don't have any other business, I think we need to have a motion to uh, well, sorry. we got to continue this, Mr. Sass. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, we have them re reapply. Do we want them to reapply or continue? No, 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 no. We don't want them to reapply. Okay. Continue. Okay. So I ask. move that we continue this public hearing to a date in the future when uh, at the applicant's convenience. Okay. Do second. I have a second? Seconded, Adam Sokolowski, for the record. Okay. Thank you. Um, vote. I vote yes. Mr. Potter? Yes. Mr. Staberski? Yes. Uh, Mr. Decker? Mr. Decker? Mr. Suk uh, Mr. Sokolowski? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Mr. Decker? You're muted. <laughs> Do your thumbs up. <laughs> I love this view. Yeah. It's like you're surfing in this outer space. So what? Well, it's 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 all, we're gonna we're gonna continue it. Okay, now we now we have to have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Unless oh, we got any other business. Well, do we open. do we have the cleanup to do on the Saab dealership? Oh, oh Mr. yeah. Yes, Mr. Decker has a comment. You're right. <coughs> Mr. Decker. Weren't we supposed to revote the orders and con the conditions on the SOB dealer tonight? No, we didn't get any. Am I correct? We did, am I correct, Jim? We didn't get any, did we? No. But, um, so I wish Adam was here to explain um, Adam Costa because the, it was part of the discussion but it wasn't part of the motions and we had motions that died on the table, but it was part of the whole discussion. And basically it was like to have the gate look um, more like the neighborhood and that upon change of ownership that they came before the board, Adam wrote up uh, a decision and Adam signed it. It's been filed at the clerks. And the gate has been installed and it looks like the one next door. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure we did what we were supposed to do. Thank you, Thank you for reminding Mr. Decker. You approached me and I forgot. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other new business? I think that we need individual email accounts because of all the buying of email we get concerning some of these petitions. And I think it's time that uh, for the purpose of uh, record keeping, et cetera, that the town issue board members uh, email accounts. I think that that is all well and good. It does cost a considerable amount of money. So that is something that we would have to consider at a future meeting. I can put it on the select board agenda. I, I, I would be opposed to that. I think, uh, you know, to have additional email accounts, it's that you have to check, you're gonna miss it. Uh, if you have uh, an email account, you check regularly, you know what comes in and what doesn't. Um, if, if Mr. Decker is looking for an individual email, it's better to have maybe uh, like, like uh, some file sharing a Dropbox or something like that where we could look at things. Um, well, Decker, if I know, Mr. Decker. Frontier uh, a year and a half ago uh, gave everybody an email account that wanted one. And what happened is they said stuff would go, go to that account and you could forward it to your own. So you didn't have to check a separate place. Yes, Jen. So, I mean, there's settings that I can make in your um, accounts, whatever email account you have that can funnel all the emails from the town um, that are, you know, to a certain location. So we can try to figure something out like that for you. But I don't, I mean, I, I think that it's something that would be too costly to give everybody a private email account. But okay, Mr. Mr. Sokolowski, comment? Yeah, I, I, I think that that's a ridiculous argument that the cost is prohibitive. Um, they can take it out of our salaries. Um, I think that it could be an individual choice, but I think the town should provide that. And I would even go so far as that, you know, correspondence between town officials should be on, on the town server. I mean, you're subject to subpoena and email records and retention records. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't like doing it and I would hundred percent grab a town email address um, for ZBA members. Um, you know, I would even support a, uh, a policy. Well, respectfully speaking, Adam, there's times that I don't even know what email to send you correspondence because sometimes you use one and then sometimes you use another. So adding, you know, an additional one. And then when somebody leaves, I mean, Hey, I get it. I, 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 I get it. I just, I worry about the future sometimes. And I'm, I'm not thinking of me personally. I think about all the other board members and, uh, you know. And, and, and managing that too. Just think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Alex. Um, it's just a thought, but I mean, we could come up with a, um, you know, a, a group email um, address, like, and just, and just use Gmail. You know, we could set up like <clears throat> town of Deerfield ZBA and we could all set up, you don't know, we could do free Gmail accounts. No, because that no. violates the public record law, I think. Oh. Okay. <laughs> or not, a, maybe not in a group, not in a group, but I mean, I mean not that pick, the public record law is, you know. We, we pick a, a common ha email handle. Well, you know, we've had this discussion with um, other people in the public that have wanted to make a domain name. And so that is a discussion that has been put before the select board. So um, it's, it's out there. So I think we're still talking about it just because we're trying to fix our website. We're trying to make it more user-friendly. We're trying to transfer all of the information. So, I mean, this is not on our agenda tonight. So I just well, it's, it's an unanticipated discussion that's come within 48 hours. Mr. Decker just spoke a couple minutes ago. Yeah. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right, wait a minute, I got a comment. Um, maybe I should get reimbursed for the six reams of paper I have used, burnt up one printer and uh, used ink that's like $80 a container. Um, I, I think that, uh, I, I agree with you. And I think that it's, that's one of the things I want to talk to the planning board about. I mean, I don't want to do this forever and um, people give up a lot of time and it's not just this board, it's every board. There should be some compensation. 
um, for board members, whether it's conservation, planning board. I mean, and it's weird. Like as a constable, I get $20 to hang up a piece of paper. It's ridiculous. Why are they giving me $20 to hang up a piece of paper? I'd rather do that for free than, than this, you know, and, and it's, it's not uniformed, you know, the postal warrant. Uh, so I, I think that town hall should, should think about that. And all, all the members that put in so much time and Alex, thanks again for all the time you put in doing notes, uh, minutes, um, volunteerism. Um, it's hard to recruit young people. Alex and running other meetings has been super helpful. So am I the only one that sees, sees this as a problem about printing? And maybe John, you don't have a problem, but like I said, I'm, I got in my house, it's like, I could burn, I could heat half my house with a paper. I've been burning it, uh, burning up on my printer. I read, well, it on my, I read it on my screen. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't print it out. Well, I mean, I'm not a computer person and I, I admit that. And uh, I like to have paper in hand so I can go back and review the things. And that's what I find. And I'm not, I'm not computer savvy. I'll be honest with you, John, I'm not. I'm the first to admit it, I'm not. And I don't like them. But you think I like this thing? I wish we were sitting in a meeting and having it out and, you know, we'd smile at each other and, and, and address people like human beings. This is not the way I conduct business, but we're stuck with it. Unfortunately, I, I know the frustration of the public and I understand that 100%, but we're stuck with this thing. And now we're in a, we got a paper quandary. I mean, I looked the other day and I'm, my wife goes, look at the pile of papers you have here. I don't have to worry about kindling with to start my wood furnace because I got plenty. No, well, Bernie, I just, I just I, had five reams brought in today, and she had six cartridges for for the for the printer. I mean, this isn't cheap. This is not cheap for us. You know, when we're volunteers in this, besides all the heat we're taking, you know, and, and criticism and everything else, we I go I go along with that. But but still, we the town needs to accept the fact that we're doing a service to the town and should acknowledge the fact, at least monetarily, that they give us. I mean, maybe I'll have to come down here to take paper. I don't know, but I burnt up a printer already. My wife goes, what are you doing? As a volunteer, you're, you, I mean, it's costing you money. So I, I made a motion to adjourn. Anyone yeah. want to second it? I'm sorry. I got on my horse, but I apologize, <laughs> members. Thank you for your patience. Um, it's been a long <laughs> evening. I and want one more thing. I think we should thank Kathy Felton for the, the yes. good work she did for as long as she did it. And I was heartbreaking. Sorry to see her leave. She, she was, she was uh, a, a wonderful member and it, 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 it's heartbreaking that uh, she resigned. Absolutely. Feel I'm just gonna be happy when someone else gets to be chair and I don't have to be making all these decisions because I am not happy with it. I'm not comfortable with it, I'll be honest with you. It's a lot more work than sitting out there. Before I was a regular member, it was great. Okay, we have a second to close the meeting, to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay, a vote. Uh, Mr. Potter. Yes, Mr. Potter votes yes. We're voting to adjourn the meeting. Mr. Potter. Yes. yes. Mr. Decker. Yes. Mr. Stamerski. Yes. Mr. Sokolowski. Yes. And I'm voting yes. Thank you, Jennifer. Have a good night. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night.